Gardeners have always looked for ways to turn waste into fertility, and sometimes the strangest materials surprise us with how effective they are. One of the oldest folk methods passed down quietly among farmers is the use of cardboard soaked with urine, left to break down until it transforms into a surprisingly rich soil builder. It sounds unusual, even a little off-putting, but when tested carefully, this method delivers nitrogen, carbon, and structure in a way that revives struggling soil. The big question, though, is how long does it take for urine-soaked cardboard to turn into what gardeners call garden gold? The answer depends on time, layering, and microbes, and knowing how to work with these factors can give you a zero-cost amendment that truly changes the soil beneath your feet. Why urine-soaked cardboard works better than either material alone? Cardboard on its own is a high-carbon material. It provides structure, feeds fungi, and helps create humus, but if left dry and untreated, it takes a long time to break down. Urine, on the other hand, is rich in nitrogen in the form of urea, along with trace minerals like potassium and phosphorus. When these two come together, you suddenly have balanced carbon from the cardboard to act as a sponge, and nitrogen from the urine to fuel microbial activity. The urine soaks into the fibers, binding with the cellulose, and providing the moisture and nutrients microbes need to go to work. What would normally take many months to decompose can, under the right conditions, begin to soften and crumble within weeks. How long it takes before the transformation begins? In controlled trials and backyard experiments alike, the timeline becomes clear. If cardboard is thoroughly soaked with fresh urine and layered into an active compost pile, Softening can be seen in as little as two weeks. The cardboard begins to lose its rigidity, and fungi start colonizing the edges. Within six to eight weeks in warm weather, urine-soaked cardboard inside a hot compost pile is nearly unrecognizable, reduced to dark, spongy matter. However, when the cardboard is used directly on the soil surface as mulch and soaked with urine, the timeline stretches. Depending on moisture, temperature, and microbial life in the soil, it can take three to four months before the cardboard is soft enough to tear apart with bare hands. In cooler or drier conditions, this may extend to six months or more. What matters most is maintaining moisture and encouraging worms and fungi to do their work. How to set up the method for faster decomposition. There are two primary approaches to using urine-soaked cardboard, and each works differently. In a compost system, the goal is speed. Tear or cut the cardboard into manageable strips or squares, soak it thoroughly in fresh urine, and mix it into an existing compost pile at a ratio of roughly one part soaked cardboard to two parts green material, like kitchen scraps or grass clippings. This ensures that the nitrogen doesn't get tied up, but instead drives the breakdown process. Turning the pile weekly and keeping it damp, allows the cardboard to disappear into humus in under two months. When using the material directly in the soil, the method shifts toward patience and layering. Lay flattened sheets of cardboard directly over a bed you want to enrich, soak them with urine, and cover with two to three inches of organic matter such as grass clippings, leaf mold, or compost. This cover prevents odor, locks in nitrogen, and provides a living blanket that keeps the cardboard moist. Over time, worms will tunnel through the cardboard, dragging fibers down into the soil while fungi lace across the surface. With this approach, you can expect the cardboard to transform into garden-ready fertility by the next planting season. When it becomes safe and fertile for planting is a common question, and honestly, the concern many gardeners raise is whether urine-soaked cardboard is safe for direct garden use. The truth is, once the urea in urine is metabolized by microbes, it quickly becomes ammonium and then nitrates, both forms that plants can readily absorb. Within a few weeks in a compost pile or a few months in soil, the sharp edge of urine's nitrogen mellows into balanced fertility. By the time the cardboard has softened into crumbly dark material, it's entirely safe to plant into. A practical timeline would be about two months for compost use and four to six months for soil layering. At this stage, what was once waste 
now functions as a slow-release fertilizer and humus builder, with no risk of nitrogen burn. So, let's talk about practical examples and ratios for gardeners to follow. For gardeners wanting to replicate this method, just think in simple ratios. In compost, use about one bucket of urine-soaked cardboard for every two buckets of greens, and balance that out with browns like leaves or straw. If you're using it directly on soil, one layer of cardboard sheets, soaked well, covered with a two-inch layer of grass clippings, and topped with a one-inch layer of soil or compost works really effectively. This sandwich locks nutrients in place and ensures decomposition continues even through dry spells. In both cases, watering lightly every week speeds up the breakdown and helps worms move in. Now why does this method matter for low-cost soil revival? Well, the strength of this approach lies in its simplicity and accessibility. Cardboard is everywhere, often just thrown away, and urine is an endlessly renewable source of nitrogen that costs nothing. Together, they form a cycle where waste becomes fertility. For gardeners struggling with depleted beds, compacted soil, or limited compost materials, urine-soaked cardboard is more than just a curiosity. It's really a tool that turns forgotten resources into thriving soil health. Urine-soaked cardboard doesn't just decompose. It becomes a bridge between waste and fertility, between what is often discarded and what can be reclaimed for soil life. Whether you run an active compost pile or prefer slow soil layering, this method rewards patience and consistency with a product that rivals expensive soil amendments. If this guide gave you new ideas to test in your own garden, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more practical, science-backed ways to turn scraps into soil wealth. And, hey, don't forget to share this with a fellow gardener who could benefit from a zero-cost path to healthier soil.